What made him this way? What is the attraction? What keeps us fascinated? This is the story of Chris Chan. On January 14th, 2010, Christian filmed a video in which he sings his own lyrics over a remix by musician Moby of the song Mr. Plow, written for an episode of the cartoon series The Simpsons. Say what's the name? Christian Chandler. What's that name? Christian Chandler. What's the name? Christian Chandler. C-H-I-S-C-H again. Say what's the name? Christian Chandler. You don't need to worry, I'm drawing here. Drawing in code, my pen and marker. My papa was chicken and name it Christian Chandler. Afternoon before the sunrise, I have a new page for you. Open your eyes. The new blocks are a big surprise. A hand-drawn art is quality and that's no lie. What's he then attempts to play a harmonica. A day later, he made a brief video for the attention of Jack Thaddeus, Alec Benson Leary, Sean August Watley, creator of the comic Sonichu is Dead, and regular contributor to the Asperpedia, and the webmaster for the aforementioned website, Mao Bamboo Ling. This message is for Alec, Sean, Evan, and even Mao. You know what? I dare you four, all four of you! to come to my house and we'll see who stacks out better. The original or you crappy copiers. On the 16th, Christian filmed a video attempting to brainwash his trolls by speaking a mix of Spanish and backwards English. As usual, I will have two more pages tonight. I hope you all enjoyed the last page where Crystal finally got out of the mirror. But recently, I am reminded of an old Spanish expression which goes simply as Tu necesitas a couple of strong verbs in that set in that statement. Say it with me. Ukrepsa eta. Ukrepsa eta. Ye usinos evil. Usinos evil. All right. Stay safe and have a good day. His spree of verbal assault continued into January 17th, when, under Vivian G's advice, Chris reviews the entirety of the Aspertru story so far and criticizes it. I am here at this point recording this video to make it perfectly clear, although it was a bit of a mistake for that last video I made, but you know what, regardless of that video, I, did, I shouldn't have not have had to make such a video, because I could, pro I could just show you all the evidence that I have just read through the entire bunch of pages of, of Alex Asperchu. First off, just to name a few things, there's an, there are the obvious sturdy slanders and obvious references to it. I mean the old Buddha belly that I used to have, exaggerated man boobs, and even the goatee I used to have, I had one time. And he makes him, and he makes his Aspertu character wear nearly every shirt I wear. Nearly every shirt. And a crappy copy of a medal. My shirts. And then to make matters worse, he goes and besmirches my old, my dog. By making a crap, by making... A crappy, crappy copy of my dog. My Patty will have, Patty, the spirit of Patty will have his soul for dinner tonight. She will be haunting your nightmares, Mr. Leary. And of course, even including the unapproved recreation of my character, of my person, within his pages, as you can see right here. And then, even worse, starting on page C29, he sets me on fire. He sets me on fire. And then even
if it works, could see his nutmeg be on fire on page 30. I swear, if that ain't the most outrageous thing that he has ever done against me. But I could, de I could definitely reference a few more instances of where he actually is considered peeing on himself within his own comic series. Start with, of course, with a few from his first book of graphic nudity or sexual reference on page three of his zero book. Even worse off, on page ten, and while he's in that Burger King, with all his goddamn homosexual references as well. And he uses uncensored swear words such as shit and ass. In between all in between all of his books. So many goddamn of those. And his and his A and B books are anti religious. That little son of a bitch, he's pe basically peeing on his own self. Now look, I'll admit I have done my little share of nudity within the within my few pages within a couple of pages, but they were censored by either images of lemon for vagina and bananas for dick. And it was and the, and, the, and that book was finally finalized and organized so that it'd be appropriate for all for all those of ages, TVY7, and such. And I, and if I ever said a swear word within my book, I would censor it. But he does not censor his own swear words. But like I said, he's basically gone to the things, again, he's basically mocking me with the references of myself. Between my, between the, between the belly, the man boobs, the goatee, the glasses, Numerous shirts of fake metal where I, yeah, a, a copy of my dog, an unapproved recreation of myself and my son and my characters, and even sets me on fire. It makes my, it makes, what is, it makes his, it makes his quote unquote sonnet shoe cologne go against me as being, as not being the original creator of the original sonnet shoe. He wishes he knows my Sanchi Rose Shoe and all my electric hedgehogs as well as I do. But he cannot because he is not me, the original creator. He is not me. So I'd send this message again to Alec, Evan, and even Mao. I have less offense with Sean, by the way. But to those three, <laughs> die. Die in hell. And I hope the soul of my late dog eats at your souls and kills you in your sleep. But aside from that, his book, his book, is the pages within the so-called Aspertu series. They are definitely ludicrous and horrendous and horrific. Even a horrific, even as horrific as within Vivian G's own book. And my pastor, Elizabeth Foss, my pastor has read the book from cover to cover, and she hates it. My reverend hates it. And I don't like it either because it is of disgrace and slander and mockery of my person and my character. Just as by as much, but actually this is worse. The ass puts you and everything there. That is worse than that book. I'm sorry, Vivian, but that book is just no good. And I'm definitely going to let my let my pastor know about the Asperpedia and the Asperchu and through all the pow through her powers within her church and the congregation and even the FBI. We will see you in Minnesota and take you down personally, Mr. Alec Basin Larry. Your mockery of my person is not appreciated. Other than that, I leave with most everybody else in peace. Have a good day.
except for you three of which I mentioned earlier. Shortly after, Asperpedia's Mao made a YouTube response video, but it has since been lost. Meanwhile, the Wikipedia sysop, Cogsdev, uploaded Mailbag 41 for Chris to address, but then soon after, moved all non-Asperture-related letters to Mailbag 42, making 41 a completely Asperture-filled offering. Instead of responding to the messages in any way, Christian deleted all of them and wrote a seven-point manifesto in their place, proclaiming that he had no relation to Aspertu nor Alec Benson Leary, and wholeheartedly disapproved of his content. Chris also noticed that Leary introduced more Sonichu characters into his Aspertu comics, such as the Chaotic Combo, which led Christian to insert his own parodies of Sonichu parodies from the Aspertu comics into his Sonichu comics, albeit with new names. He even introduced his own take on Aspertu, renaming him Mitch Sonichu. On January 20th, Chris made a drawing asking for people to help Haiti after it was devastated by an earthquake eight days prior, though Alec Benson Leary had made his own commemorative advert a day after the tragedy, which had been featured prominently on the Wikipedia. Christian's drawing also subtly took a jab at Evan Christopher George, since it featured both Simon Chu and Simone Le, touting them as a brother and sister team. On January 21st, Christian answered Mailbag 43. Chris addressed questions regarding a recent page of issue 10, in which Mitch Sonichu was suggested that he should get a makeover and change his fashion sense for the better, when his appearance strongly resembled Christian himself. There was another correspondence with Evan Christopher George, who was told by Chris an elaborate story in which Evan's creation, Simonchu himself, personally spoke with Simone LaRoschu, who told him that she did not want to return to Evan. In addition, the rejected mailbag section featured a statement from someone who criticized Chris for declaring that Alec was not allowed to bring his Sonichu characters into his own story, when Chris himself had never gotten permission from Sega or Nintendo to place their original characters into Sonichu. He also commented that the Wikipedia sysop had no say concerning advertisements, which were crucial in keeping the site running smoothly, and felt that Christian's hand-drawn on paper drawing style was inferior to Alec's digital style. Chris requested that he go f himself. In addition, he informed Vivian that he would attend his first young adult social club meeting, where he hoped he would get more exposure concerning his comic book work. It was during this meetup that he met a 23-year-old woman, who will be referred to herein as the Wallflower. During her first encounter with Chris, she told him that she was not ready for a relationship. Despite them establishing a friendship, Christian, against her wishes, believed that after some time and insistence, he could make her into his girlfriend. On January 22nd, Chris had his first phone conversation with Alec Benson Leary. Hi, is this is this uh, Christian Weston Chandler? Yes, this is Christian. May I help you? Hi, Chris. Um, this is Alec Benson Leary. Is it o is it okay if we talk? Oh yes, uh, sure. Yes. So, okay. Uh, Good. Well, uh, there's a couple things I wanted to talk to you about tonight. Um, first of all, uh, well, I understand you've got a problem with the, the ads that are on Wikipedia. Okay. Well. Um, yeah, I'll let you have your ads on the Wikipedia, but don't make them too big, and uh, leave them in the sidebar. Okay. Um, I, I do not want them covering over the introductory bots or anything else where I had to scroll down even to edit the pages or even to log in. Yeah, my friend Mao, he um, he actually makes the ads for me. I, I didn't make them myself, but um, I can try to talk to him about that. Okay, how about this... Uh, yeah. Just to make it equal, put an advertisement for the Wikipedia on the Astropedia, about as much as the uh, Astropedia ads for on my Wikipedia. Um, well, uh, you'd probably right, want to contact you, you Mal because he's my manager. He he does all the you know the grunt work on Astropedia. I'm sure he'd be willing to sell you some ad space on Astropedia. We could definitely try to work something like that out. All right. Well, Mal and I can talk through email. All right. Uh, you, like you say, we're on friendly terms right now, and I'd like to keep it that way because I got my start because of you. Um, but to be honest, I want to be honest and frank with you. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You made a couple of videos, and I don't watch all your videos, but I do try to keep up. I mean, I spent a lot of time drawing the comics, so I, I don't have a lot of time to you know watch videos anymore. But I saw a couple of videos where you actually threatened me with uh, um, you know, physical okay, well, Um yeah, okay, well. Also the video where you uh you wanted your your dog to to eat me or something like that. You uh, your, your dog to eat my soul. Like yeah. the death threats were kind of scary to begin with, but that was just a yeah. scary. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll take that back as well. I'm sorry. Okay. Chris then criticizes the creators of Asper Chew for featuring blood and gore in their recent stories, and tells Alec to inform his readers in a disclaimer that Chris's Sonichu characters who appear in Asper Chew are parodies. Well, as you said, those weren't yours, though. You said those were copies. You said those were just, you know, copies of... Yeah, 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 yeah. your versions are just, uh, re- are just, like some, are just recreational, recreation, recreated facsimiles. Uh, you're confused. Uh, I mean, you said in the comics that those were mine, but so they must be yeah, original, I've, right? You the, said in the comic they weren't the chaotic combo, so they must be original. But then you came and took them. I, I don't get, and you renamed them, and you know, uh, and, and not wow. just not just the combo, but you tried to retake my Aspertu, and Aspertu wasn't you know a copy of anything. You you renamed him Mitch Sonichu. I mean, Aspertu's mine. You. I don't really appreciate that. Hmm. You know, you accuse me of thievery, but then you go and try to take my Aspertu. Okay, well, no, you did take my side shoe, and uh, made him claim him to be the around. original one. And even worse, you made him brother to Aspertu with the homosexual tendencies and whatnot. Even even when you drew the uh, when you drew the Ki combo hedgehogs, you made wild a homosexual when he is not. Well, but so, wild, just, that wild's not yours. I mean, what does it matter if my wild, wild is gay? I mean, I, I felt it was depth to the character. I was just trying to give them a little personality. Okay, well. I mean, I never met Two is not Chew. gay. Aspert Chew has a girlfriend. Dixie Chew. Um, no, actually, uh, I read further in the book, and Dixie Chew dumped his ass. Well, what? no, she doesn't mean that. They're oh. destined to be together, Chris. I mean, can't you see those undertones? I mean, that's where this whole comic is going. Even if a girl does dump him, what does it matter? He he went after a girl. He didn't go after a boy. Like uh, you said, Son- I- Sonichu is his brother. I mean, why would he, you know, even if he was gay, why would he go for his brother? That's just, that's just sick. Uh, yeah. I mean, why would well, you anyway, think? Okay, okay, well, okay, well, listen, how about this? In your comics, when you, uh, in the future... Or in re-referencing the past pages, the uh, sign shoe that is uh, Aspertu's brother, you just refer to him as Michael, and the wild you refer to him as Bobby, the, Angel- the Angelica, Trisha, etc., just like I said in my um, page. But, and okay. this can be Aspertu's nickname. But Chris, those aren't really their characters' names. They have the same name but, as your character. Yeah, okay, well, okay, well, you see... When I gave the, the uh, K.I. Ca- combo characters those names originally yeah. in my books, those would be their nicknames. Just, I mean, they're all Sanchus and those shoes indi- individually, but they're just of different types. Like, uh, he would, like without the nickname, he would be Grass Sanchu. Without the nickname, she would be Water Rose Chew, Flying Rose Chew, Fighting Sanchu, Sonic Sanchu. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay, I, I understand what you're saying. Well, see, okay. there's, there's one of the differences, though, because in my comic, those are really their names. I mean, you know, Angelica, Punchy, Bubble. No, no, you see, no, you see, but those are you, actually their names in my book, in my look, book. You, they're nicknames, you said. And yeah. In my comic, they're their actual names. That's the difference. No, I'm, I'm talking reference to the Pokemon game. You know, if you want to name your Bulbasaur, they call it giving it a nickname, but really it's just giving them their name. Chris, um, my characters aren't Pokemon, though. I don't draw Pokemon. That's not how it works. You, in my you, yeah, you, yeah, you have been drawing Pokemon. Sonichu no. is an electric hedgehog Pokemon. I, I thought he was a, a Sonichu. I mean, Sonichu I thought that, is I thought an that electric was like hedgehog. I make it perfectly clear that Sonichu and Roshu are electric hedgehog Pokemon. Um, oh, okay. Um, well, I think the point of confusion there is um, where they're – like, I've never seen any Pokeballs in your comic or, or trainers it's, or any of those, those other Pokemon elements, you know? Yeah, okay, like, shouldn't stop, they live stop. in Pokeballs? Okay. Yes, there's a Pokeball that specially catches side shoes and rose shoe called the s Chew Ball. And there, are, there is a reference to that within the books. Sonichu lives in, like, a house, doesn't he? I mean, he lives like a, like a person who's he training was, the he was, Yeah, okay, well, you see, he was originally a wild – Pokemon, the original Sanchu. But the original Rose Shoe was originally the right shoe that was caught 
and trained by the Pokemon trainer, Kelly. Kel for short. I, uh, I actually didn't know any of that, but um, I digress. Um, the point is that uh, Asper 2 and uh, my version of the Chaotic Combo, all those characters, those are not Pokemon in my comics. I mean, Pokemon don't exist in the world of Asper 2. Like Asper 2, you know, he lives with his grandparents in a house. I mean, he's a person. Okay. All right. But still, that's, it just makes it sound like my characters. When you talk about the side shoe from Quickville. But they're not your legend. characters. We've established that. They're not yours. I mean, they're my characters. I have it's, it's original. All like the I said, my comic's not a parody. Side shoe, Sonic shoe, and Rose shoe. I actually have paper registered copyrights on those. So I could sue you. But I'm trying to resolve this peacefully. You have... Oh. Okay, so you have... Yeah, look under the copyright, copyright section on, on the Wikipedia. But you said Sonic is a Pokemon, right? I mean, I'm pretty sure Nintendo has the copyright claims of Pokemon. So... Still, it's I mean, Sonic I mean, it's you. a good point. I might, I might want to just contact Nintendo just to make sure everything's okay, you know, to make sure I'm not stepping on their toes. But. They have been contacted before, and everything's okay, so you don't need to do that. But, well, then, I mean... How can you hold the copyright to a Pokemon? The Virginia I mean, Library of Congress it, it, allows me. To... Wouldn't it? Well, Virginia Library of Congress, you know, it can't tell they, Nintendo they, what to do. I mean, they can't tell Nintendo to just hand over copyrights to their creations to just anybody. I mean, you know, Nintendo could take, you know, the Virginia Library of Congress to court and say, "Hey, hey wait a minute, you know, you issued this copyright illegal." <sighs> okay, well, well, let's just. Uh, okay, this is. What we're talking about right now, it just seems pointless to what we were originally talking about. Let's just agree that... Uh, well, I, I don't think it's pointless. I mean, I'm just trying to establish that... I mean, you said you could sue me. I mean, I don't want to get sued. Nobody wants to get sued. But yeah, I just a, don't understand yeah, how yeah. you could sue me. That's what I'm confused on. I mean, you're confusing me, Chris. I mean, call me yeah. naive, but I just don't get exactly what you're getting Okay, at. well, let's just rewind... And go back to what we agreed on before, you know, readjusting the uh, advertisement size and uh, giving me and the uh, possible Wikipedia ad on your, on the Asperpedia, and just like the Sonic Shoe and your book, you know, as Michael's Sonic Shoe uh, and the other Sonic Shoes and most Shoes that uh, of the AI uh, of the non KI combo. Okay. But, um, uh, well. But Let's just rename them by the names I suggested in my book. Um, in your book. Well, all right. Um, like I said, I'll talk to Mal about the ads. Uh, as far as the renaming goes, I mean, I guess you can include, you know, you can make up some characters, Mike, Sonichu, and Mitch, Sonichu, and whatever. But, you know, I, it, that's your comic book. If you want to create those characters, that's fine. I mean, like I said, I'm not going to rename my characters. Uh. All right, well, listen, uh, Barry Power, my phone is running low, so perhaps we could talk again another time. Uh, right, you take care. You take care. I, I'd like to talk right to you. Now. Later that day, Christian filmed a Captain's Log, which mostly focuses on the controversial Mitch Sonichu makeover in Sonichu issue 10, which had some readers asking if this meant that Mitch was a homosexual. First off, I want to give a shout out to the Portland Sonichu fan club. Their president Megan and their vice president Brad, who did this song that's playing on in the background. So it's me on CD here. Thank you. And also to Becky, who's doing a paper on me as a modern cartoonist. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, anyway, uh, I stand strong. I continue to draw the pages. Uh, yes, there will be update uploaded bulk. I mean, if I can't if I can't uh, get five in a single day, then I'll still, you know, I'll get them up the next day. But you know, at least I'm doing the average of two pages a day. That stands strong. Anyway, also uh, the makeover I did, you know, I get I just received a I just answered a new bunch of email, new bunch of messages in the mailbag. You know what? Look, I say this. Think about like on Home and Garden, the Learning Channel even on Discovery, and even on MTV. There's such home remodeling, cooking cuisine, and myth-busting myth shows, and, would, and uh, even Pimp My Ride, 
And would you call the people on those shows some essentials for giving something else or somebody else a makeover? No. You n no, you don't. So that myth is busted. And also, I still say what I said against uh, Evan and those people on there. The video abruptly ends, possibly due to the camera running out of power. He near immediately followed up with a short video to complete the captain's log. Anyway, uh, I'll leave y'all with that. And uh, obviously, Asper, also be, obviously, the Asperpedia is going down because Alec and his crew are shooting themselves in the foot. I would never do blood and gore. That's just gross. I mean, if you're not queasy, then come back to science ship. On January 25th, the Wallflower sent Chris an email listing her various websites, revealing herself to be an amateur writer. Christian admired her skill and wished for them to talk over the phone soon, wanting to exchange more information about each other and wishing to meet again soon. Your laughter and voice sweetly thrills my mind like robins twittering their song after the sunrise. In another email, Chris informed her of the details concerning their upcoming future date, in which they would go to a concert to see Celtic Woman, an Irish music act, and afterwards would spend some time at a nearby Taco Bell. He informed her that his mother would probably come with him to meet her and her own parental escort. The Wallflower thought this idea sounded nice. Chris then expressed his wish that they keep the option of a relationship open for when the right time comes. She then revealed that she was going to the concert with a friend of hers and offered to meet up some other time. All the while, Christian continued answering mailbags from fans, with uploads of new Sonic pages becoming more spread out. In Mailbag 46, he defended his tardiness in updating the comic. I have been drawing and coloring on a daily basis. I cannot help if I have a life to enjoy too. I have joined a young adult social group, and I have met a lovely woman there who likes me too. We are hitting it off like two hip wallflowers. You have a life too. Understand my needs, and let me have my life. Another letter highlighted the discovery that the name Christian Weston Chandler was an anagram for Antichrist Enhances World, and Devin Christopher George made another appearance telling him that he would take legal action if Simonla didn't die in Chris's story. I'm not gonna just let it go because you're not a great director. You're a comic artist, and you have to deal with legal issues involving your characters when they arise. You can't pretend a lawsuit isn't imminent and just hope it goes away if you ignore it. This is serious, and if you don't do something about this, I'll have to take some drastic measures. We're keeping track. In Mailback 49, when asked about whether then US President Barack Obama should repeal the don't ask, don't tell military policy concerning homosexuals to allow them more freedom and encouragement to join the army, Christian stated that the policy should be repealed so that more gay men could die in explosions. It was also around this time that he was linked to a fan forum called Sonichu Forum where he conversed with presumed fans and answered their questions for about four days. On January 28th, Alec managed to get Chris to answer his phone to have another talk. I would have expected to call at 9.30, uh, but anyway... Oh, I, uh, I, I actually did try to call at uh, 9.30. It didn't get an answer, so I thought I'd try again. You're, you're kind of a difficult man to get a hold of, Chris. Hmm. Yeah. I could All talk right. for a few minutes, so... Let's try right. not to belabor this conversation. They discuss Chris's ongoing woes concerning ads on Wikipedia, copyright issues, and a problem Chris had with Alex's character being named after Asperger's syndrome. Chris, we don't choose our names. I mean, our names are, yeah, are given to us. I mean, think of it this yeah. way. You know, the name Asperger, if you think of that as a, as a detriment, I don't, but, it, you know, if, if you interpret the comic that way, uh, think of it as a, a personal, um, a sort of character flaw, if you will that he has to work to overcome. And all, all good characters have character flaws. Sometimes yeah. characters don't always live the happiest lives in fiction, but that's part of what makes good fiction. Yeah. Mm, but still, I mean, yeah, with that, think about it. I mean, what if your parents had named you Asper? Because uh, they were, like, as if they could foretell you had Asperger. You would have Asperger's. Okay, Chris, that's part of the, um, again, the character flaw. Asper, too, has things weighing him down he has curses and that's part of what makes a good character i mean you can, you wouldn't make a character that's just you know all powerful and and you know perfect in every way and has no real problems ever would you that'd be kind of boring complex characters have problems that they overcome but i mean as an individual within his own world outside of your control asperger would not want 
that name, he would be in agreement with me and probably want to change his name to something like Mitch. Right? Have I mean, you ever watched the movie Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Yes, I have. It was a good movie. Yeah, you got this whole tomb world there. And mm-hmm. within that, it's, it would coincide with the comic book world and every individual comic published or unpublished drawn all together. And but, within that world, actually would reside your Astrid too, but he would be with his individual thoughts, and she gave him an adult attitude with his individual thoughts. He would hate that having the name of Asper to because it emphasizes his mental problem. And he's like, he, it, it, his process of wanting to move on from that and become more accessible in society, that he would not want a name that would make him feel... Okay, like that's... As if, um, he, like, like as if he's still living it, even after he's fully recovered from it. Okay, but Chris, um, you know, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, that was still a movie, and everything in it was determined, predetermined by the movie writers and the director. And I mean, there is no, you know, like, alternate cartoon world in reality. I mean, cartoon characters don't actually think and feel things. You obviously are naive about that because you're not understanding that possibility so, of that universe actually existing. So you do believe that um, when an artist creates a cartoon character, that character actually becomes real? Is that what you're saying to me? Within that universe, yes. But the universe is fake. I mean, the Astro 2 universe exists on paper and in my computer. It's just, it's whatever I write it to be. Here's a question for you. Um... If you think a character would want, you know, an appropriate name, a good name, not a name that, you know, calls them out on something or sets them back. Sonichu is the name of a species, correct? Sonichus and Rosechus, those are a species, right? Yeah, but he was the first original Sonichu, and she was the original Rosechu. So, they, so, so but they, wouldn't they still want their own name? And they, and, and they each came up with their name on their own. And they did not need a nickname to go with that. Would you be comfortable if the name Christian Weston Chandler, uh, you know, didn't exist and you were just called man or, or person or something? Okay, well, still, what if you actually conceived a child with your girl, with your girlfriend or wife? Then would you feel that you actually own that child even after you had raised it from being a baby to, let's say, late teenage years where that child will actually feel more like an individual, independent being. Chris, you do understand that a uh, child, a human being, is substantially more than a comic character, right? They're not the same thing. They're not even close. Of course I would name a child. Children are, are real, and children are not our property. I mean, if I had a child, I would give it all the love and support it needed, but it is its own person, or he or she, I should say. Whereas a comic character is just, it's whatever you draw on paper or in Photoshop. What if, uh, it was, what if she was on the other foot? What if Asper Chu created you? Well, then I'd be a, a comic character myself, and I wouldn't have any thoughts or feelings. So it's, that's a moot point. You think that a comic character would not have their own thoughts and feelings? No. They are naive. Chris, you have told me that you think that a comic character is fundamentally as you know much of a person as a real human being. That is the naive thought. No, you I'm the writer. Know. I'm I'm like the god of the Aspertu world. I decide what goes on in Aspertu's world. I decide what who and what Aspertu is and what he thinks and feels, if anything, which he doesn't because it's still just a character on paper. And you know when I put the pen down, Aspertu stops being there. Nothing okay. exists in Aspertu's world that I haven't drawn. <sighs> Boy, it's naive to think that there's anything more. I think we should agree to disagree on this point um, because we're, right. we both have our own our own thoughts on that. Um, I'm actually getting some letters about Sonichu, uh, about why you're not updating daily, and I was kind of curious about I, that. Well, for your information, I am updating daily. I draw a column on two pages a day. Well, I, I can't noticed- help it if I can't if I don't have access to my computer or if I can't get to it right away. Besides which, my biological clock has been fickle on me. It's been making me go, making me fall asleep earlier. Maybe I could get an alarm clock. 
Um, I'm just kind of confused why I would spend an hour to draw a page but not take the extra 60 seconds to upload it. It takes more than 60 seconds to scan it and fit it in Photoshop, then upload it. Now, it probably would take like half, try to take like half an hour for all that to work. I didn't know that you uh, did Photoshop work with your pages. What do you use Photoshop for, if I may ask? To, hand change, to change it from handwritten text to more legible typed text. You know, if I remember right, I think kind of one of the criticisms you had about Aspergill was that it was not completely, you know, hand-drawn original. Uh, because I do use Photoshop in part of my my creative process, but it sounds like you actually do kind of the same thing. Which is, you know, that's fine. I mean, digital media is where, you know, the art world is going. But, see, I thought that you just, you drew it all on paper and then uploaded I, well, it. That was well, it. for I your information, I, ha I did draw it all on paper. The only part that I edit in Photoshop is the text, what you read. Well, yeah. It just it just seems a little hypocritical that you do use Photoshop in the creative process, but you you criticize me for it. I mean, don't you think? No, actually, what I thought is that you skip the hand drawing and you draw everything on your Photoshop with the computer mouse. What I do, I use a tablet and I draw on that, and that's basically the same thing as pen and paper, except what I draw just goes right onto the computer screen. So I don't use a mouse. It's the same. Okay, but it's, yeah, it's but it's okay, but still, it's crappy compared to mine. Even my mother agrees. Oh, hey, 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 come on, that's that's a little insulting, Chris. What do you mean crappy? I mean, my mother says that my comic is you know the most beautiful comic she's ever seen too. But I, I kind of think that's just because she's a supportive mother. You know, mothers are supposed to support their children in their endeavors. I mean, it's okay I to it. disagree. I just I'm curious why you think it's crappy. Because it's computer drawn. It's not originally hand drawn. I just told you it is hand drawn. It's hand drawn on a tablet. You don't have the old fashioned original pencil or pen markings. That's what, what I have. So, because I don't have like smudge marks on my paper, is that what you mean? Okay, by comparison, could I say that um, our car is not, you know, true original transportation because, you know, people should be using old fashioned horses? I mean, you use Photoshop for lettering and effects. We're one and the same here, Chris. Alec then brings up the issue of Simonla. Evan wanted me to, to talk to you about that, about using Simon Chu. You know, Simon Chu was, was his creation, and he used that without permission. And yeah, he's asked you yeah. several times to not to, to get rid of Simon Chu and Simonla or whatever. Yeah, but actually, Simonla was never really inspired from Simon Chu. I took an original Rose Chu, I changed her to a ground color, Give her the complexion, added an armadillo shell, and then a few drills in appropriate places. places. Ka even, ka so kind of like how I took a Sonic even, and made him yellow and gave him a goatee and glasses and a Buddha belly, and th thus was born Aspergew. I mean, why didn't you yeah. just say that to Evan in the first place? Because he's been emailing you for a long time. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm looking at the Simonla page on your Wikipedia here. Um, you say that about on or before August 26, 2008, I received an email from Evan George uh, submitting his Sonic Chu fan art to me, then later submitted his idea for Simon Chu. It did not strike me as good at first, but for a few months, I wanted to create a ground type. Um, so from Simon Chu, I created Simone La Rose Chu. That's, that's on the Simone La article on your Wikipedia. I mean, that's smoking gun, Chris. That's proof that you used Simon Chu as a base. You know, I'm not trying to attack you with this, but I really think this is evidence that you should get rid of Simon Chu and Simone Law. Write them out. Because the facts are right there, Chris. I want to let you know that you do need to comply with Evan's demands. Because, you know, he's talking about litigation, and he said that he'd, you know, he'd back off if you acknowledge in the comic and write Simon Chu and Simone Law out and, you know, say that they will be done and gone forever. I mean, would you be willing to do that? Write them out? I'll, can, I'll think about it. Okay, well, don't think too long. I mean, this is a serious issue. Uh, anyway, I'm feeling tired right now. Okay, well, maybe I'll, I'll let you go. Um, you have a good night, Chris. All right. All right. Good night. Good night. Has another creator managed to converse about the creative process with Chris? 
His peculiar attachment to his characters was made crystal clear. Quickville had become more than a hobby, more than an ambitious dream of stardom, even more than a way to live out his fantasies. In Christian's mind, at least, it had become a tangible reality, inhabited by living, breathing cartoon characters. For as he had stated before, Chris was truly young at heart.